guys. I made 50 flour tortillas today so that you don't have to. <laughs> Stick with me so we can find out what is the best recipe for a soft flour tortilla. So, what is the perfect tortilla? Well, <laughs> I say that depends on who you ask. Some will say corn tortillas are the best. Others will say thin and soft. Some will say flour tortillas, they like them thick and fluffy. Others say they just like crispy tortillas. And then there's everything in between. But there is one thing I think we can all agree on, and that is when a tortilla is homemade and served fresh. That is the best way to eat a tortilla. Today we're using fresh milled flour. Let me just go ahead and pull my hair back so we can dive right in and get started. I really feel like a flour tortilla is such a simple yet versatile culinary gem. So how come so many things can go wrong when we try to make them at home? Stick with me if you want to learn the behind the scenes because I tested multiple different variations to my favorite flour tortilla recipe. And of course, I made them with fresh milled flour. So dive in with me as we see all the tips, tricks, fails, and successes as I test out and troubleshoot all the things that can go wrong while making flour tortillas from scratch at home. So stick with me if you want to learn the behind the scenes while I do some troubleshooting. Then in the next video, I will reveal the perfect flour tortilla recipe with fresh milled flour that we came up with. But it is important to note, it's not always in the recipe. Sometimes it's in the technique that can make or break it. So I started out making my typical flour tortilla recipe, but then I thought, how can I make it better? I used half hard white and half soft white wheat here in this first batch. And contrary to popular opinion, I like to use milk instead of water. I think it helps achieve those little brown spots a little bit better and keep them a bit softer when they're finished. But we shall see because I tested that too. So first, before I move on, let me throw some tips at you that I learned along the way. Number one is the heat. It doesn't matter what recipe you try if the heat isn't right. Then it just won't work out. I'm using a cast iron pan on an induction top. If you have cast iron, you're well aware that it takes a bit of time to get it heated up. So we need to preheat it for probably 10 to 15 minutes. That's what I found to be just about right. I like to see just a little bit of steam or smoke coming from the empty pan. 
Now, not huge billows of smoke, however. We don't want that. And also, another little side note, don't try to preheat your cast iron on a super high temperature to try to speed up the process. I can't express this enough. This isn't just when you're cooking tortillas. This is with any cooking in cast iron. This will scorch your food every time, I promise. Even if you turn down the temperature right before you put the food in. Remember, it takes a while to preheat these pans, which means it also takes a while to cool down. So if you don't have cast iron and you just have a normal pan, that will work too. Probably just need to preheat it for about five minutes or so, not quite as long. So that brings me to tip number two. When you're rolling out the balls of dough, make note if they're starting to dry out. If you need to keep them covered or I like to oil the outsides of each ball so that helps them to stay moist. Because when the dough dries out, then we start having issues with a crispy or tough tortilla. See how this area here is starting to turn white and crack a little bit? This is getting too dry. So I need to spritz it with a little bit of water and then coat it with oil. And then if we need to cover these up so the rest of them don't dry out, we can do that also. Tip number three, don't overcook your tortillas. No more than one minute on each side. I promise if they haven't puffed up after that first minute or so, they're probably not going to. Maybe something else happened along the way. I like to cook them for about 30 to 45 seconds on each side. Then tip number four, this one is very important. It seems such a simple thing, but it makes all the difference. Make sure that you have a cloth or a tea towel or something to keep the cooked tortillas covered. Right after you pull them off the heat, cover them with a towel. This keeps the warmth and steam in, helping to keep your tortillas soft and pliable. So these four tips should ensure a perfectly soft flour tortilla every time. So let's review those tips real quick. One, preheat your pan to the right temperature the first time before cooking. Two, don't let your tortilla dough dry out. Three, don't overcook your tortillas. And four, keep the tortillas covered with a towel after cooking. If even one of these is off, the tortillas will probably be stiff or dry or have an issue, even if you followed the recipe to a T. Okay, so let's move on to rolling out those little dough balls. If your dough balls keep shrinking when you're trying to roll them out, just cover them back up and let them rest just a little while longer. They're just letting you know that they aren't quite ready. I think listening to our dough is one of the most important things that we can do while baking anything really. Typically, the dough tells us what it needs. So we can see that these turned out quite all right, but I just had this itch inside me. I had to know, was water really better like most other recipes call for, or was something else totally different that I hadn't even tried yet the option that I should go with? Hmm. So on to batch number two. So this next batch, I made exactly the same recipe as the first batch, but instead of milk, I used water. I had to know. Everything else was exactly the same. I weighed my liquid both times, so I knew it was exactly the same. I used the same wheat berry combination. Again, I weighed those to make sure everything was the same. And this dough seemed just a bit stickier, which actually wasn't a bad thing because the first dough did start to dry out just a tiny bit on me, which is why you probably saw me pull out that spray bottle and misting it with just a little bit of water. I also experimented with the thickness of the tortillas during my testing to see if I had any better results with thicker or thinner and overall rolling them out pretty thin was the winner in most cases. But I do want to make note that this batch made with the water and not the milk did not bubble and brown quite as nicely as the first batch using the milk. They did end up soft and pliable however but for the taste and visual appeal I decided to just move on to a different wheat variety for the next time but move back to the milk variation. Which brings us into batch number three. All right, so batch number three, this batch, I went back to the original recipe. However, I made a little bit of change. I used all soft white wheat just to see if I could get a softer tortilla. I also decided to add a little bit of vinegar to the mix just to see if it would give me a little more bubbling action. 
I had really high hopes for this recipe, and the next time I want to make 50 more tortillas, I will probably play with this some more because I think we could get a really good recipe out of all soft white wheat for sure. However, it was kind of a sticky mess. So as you already know, if you've been watching me for a while, I've explained that soft white wheat tends to need more flour in a recipe if you're subbing it out for a different flour. Alternatively, the hard white wheats generally will use less flour or more liquid if you're subbing it out for other wheats. So if you're making tortillas with all soft white wheat berries, you would wanna increase the flour amount. And on the other hand, if you're making them out of all hard wheat, you may need to decrease the flour amount just a little. I found a perfect balance at about half hard and half soft variety. I find that that just really works for me quite well. Well, this dough was so sticky that I had to let it rest longer, but this made for a new discovery. Instead of mixing the ingredients, then kneading it right away like most recipes call for, why don't I try the same method that I teach with my bread recipes and let it sit to absorb the liquid and then I start kneading. This was an amazing discovery and I went on to use it with all my other batches. So once I let the dough rest, I was able to gently knead this dough so that I could work with it. It was super delicate and a bit more difficult to work with, especially during the rolling out and lifting them up and putting them on the pan to cook them. They wanted to tear a little bit and they were a little bit more weak in structure. So again, I really think that this recipe could be worked with to work out perfectly with soft white wheat, but I ended up with something I feel is a little bit better. They did get a little bit of brown spots, but there was almost little to no bubbling action as far as the air pockets that fill up. I got a little bit discouraged during this batch because I really thought they were going to work out even better than the other two. They did turn out very soft, but not quite as ideal as I wanted them to. So on to some reconfiguring for batch four. And here I wanted to play with a little bit different grain. So I decided to do half hard white wheat and half spelt. I also decided to try adding some more oil to see what the results of that would be. And for fun, I threw in a little bit of sugar. So I decided to permanently keep that method of letting the flour absorb the liquid a little bit before kneading. This was a valuable addition to my recipe method. I also played around with the cooking temperatures here and there to make sure that I found the perfect cooking temperature. This dough was actually really nice to work with after the rest period, and these ended up very thin and soft. So if you like those really thin ones, I would say increase your oil amount and that will give you those really thin soft tortillas. I'm sorry I couldn't use any of the original audio from this video. <laughs> Generally, I like to do a little mix of voiceover and original audio, but it's currently the week of the 4th of July, and you probably know what that means. In the United States, this is what my audio sounds like. <laughs> I thought this actually might be the preferred method, but after a simple family taste test, these were the least favorite from all four batches. <sighs> so back to the drawing board, which leads me into batch number five. At this point in the evening, it was about midnight. <laughs> I compiled my notes and took a moment to collect my thoughts and just take in all that I had learned over the last several hours. Couldn't I just give it one more go? Maybe I could nail it just right. Or maybe I would just have some more notes to take. I guess we'll have to see in the next video how they turned out. I'll see you there, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with me today after we made all these tortillas. It was a lot of work, but it helped us to discover what works, what doesn't work, and how can we can improve our recipe. So if you stick with me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the bell so you can find out the results of what we all discovered today. So thanks for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned so that you will find out which recipe 
we had the most success with. Uh, 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 uh.